crazy, isn't it? So I'm going to grab and share my screen here if I can find, here we go. Awesome. Awesome. Just a few notes I wanted to talk about. And then um, we definitely can talk about what you guys are doing for sleep. I'm focusing more on women, of course, and our age and things like that. But will there be a little bit of history in that here um, as well? So um, obviously, you all know, and I, I'm going to be throwing questions out to you guys too along here, but good sleep is essential for everything, right? And did you know that the average adult needs seven to nine hours of sleep each night? Is everybody getting seven to nine hours? <laughs> yeah. I know, I know. So fewer than thirds of women get that much sleep, and that's according to the CDC. So um, I've had my moments uh, of not getting enough sleep, and it's usually related to stress, but it can be uh, caffeine related. Uh, for me, when I was having tons of night sweats, that was miserable for me. Um, for sure. And then, um, or, you know, you know, honestly worry, you know, as you're worrying about everything in your life, right. It just makes you not sleep. So oh. what is even one night of poor sleep can cause, obviously you guys know this daytime sleepiness, trouble with memory and concentration, impaired, you know, impaired performance, no matter where you're at, you know, whether you're, you could just working, um, just doing your activities of daily living. Sometimes when you don't get enough sleep, you wake up and you just want to go right back to sleep. So it's kind of unfortunate. But when you have this chronic problem, though, it increases your injury for it risk for injury, accidents, illnesses, and even death. Mm -hmm. And, you, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to scare anybody, but people who just don't sleep, it, it just leads to chronic health issues and, and yeah, early death is one of those because it just all, it just all compiles and makes just speaking of sleep, right? Um, so getting good sleep is vital and we want quality sleep. But of course, as women, we've had, we have our own problems that lead to not getting that quality sleep. Our periods, pregnancy, menopause, right? And that affects how well or how well we don't sleep when we so we also have the changing levels of our hormones, as you guys know, estrogen and progesterone um, throughout our month. And it starts in our teenage years and it, it just lasts over our lifetime. So some common sleep problems for women, there's 70 million Americans that suffer from sleep problems. Um, of course, women, we are more likely to have those problems because, um, and, and, and some of it is, or mainly a lot of it actually is due to hormones, um, insomnia, restless leg syndrome. Sometimes that restless leg syndrome comes on because of anxiety, but a lot of it starts even with uh, pregnancy, which, which was really when I was reading about it. Um, insomnia, you can either have difficulty falling asleep or you fall asleep, but then you wake up, right? And then you wake up, you don't feel very good. It's very hard to function throughout the day. Uh, insomnia is a most common sleep disorder and women, excuse me, are 40% more likely to suffer from it than men and have all that daytime sleepiness. And there's lots of reasons. And the biggest one is hormonal changes. Um, and when you go through menopause and even after your circadian rhythm is off. And what I mean by circadian rhythm is, and this is, um, everybody has this, it has a circadian rhythm, but during the day, your light is like your master clock. It tells you to, to wake up, be alert, and keep us active. But then as it gets darker out, the, the master clock initiates the melatonin, which is the hormone that promotes sleep. And then um, that keeps transmitting those signals that help us stay asleep throughout the night. Um, so we all have that circadian rhythm. And so how can we work with what we have? Uh, and I'll get into that a little bit too. Um, hot flashes, night sweats, um, and they're experienced by 75 to 85 percent of women uh, that are going through menopause. And that can last a long time, a number of years, the hot flashes and things like that, and the, the night sweats, especially. Um, but then there are women, not very many, that don't experience that at all. So it's it's just one of those things. Every one of us is a little bit different. 
Women, of course, are nearly twice as likely as men report depression and anxiety, but they're both connected to insomnia and who has the most problems with insomnia about women. So when we talk about, you know, sleep or um, treatment for insomnia, problems sleeping, there are some, some habits that we can develop, that we should try and develop. And some of those are, and you most, most of you have heard this, reducing caffeine and alcohol um, and improving the sleep, your sleep environment. And we'll get into what does that look like. There's also things that can contribute to insomnia that are, are health reasons. It could be bladder problems. Um, so as you know, when you have babies, everything kind of seems to um, not be very strong in the pelvic area. And so a lot of women have problems um, having to go to the bathroom a lot, even during the night and end up, you know, you have, you end up sometimes having surgery and things like that to pull that bladder back up. And so a lot of times that happens, um, pain, uh, fibromyal fibromyalgia, uh, restless leg syndrome, a lot of those things too um, happen to women, which keep us from sleeping. There's, you know, medications that we can take, there's therapy, there's lifestyle changes. I tend to obviously start with lifestyle changes first um, and then going, uh, there are some medications, there's some natural medications like melatonin that we talk about. Um, we don't produce enough sometimes as we get a little bit older. So taking a supplement is, can be very, very helpful for that. So here's some biological differences between men and women. Um, we actually tend to take longer to fall asleep and we spend more time in restorative, slow wave, deep sleep than men do, which is good. We need to have that, that slower wave, deep sleep, but that also um, can wake us up quicker or not quicker, but we're lighter sleepers. Um, we sleep about 20 minutes less per night than a man does. Sometimes I think that's more. Um, and we report higher levels of sleepiness, of course, because we're not getting enough sleep. Uh, so this is just kind of goes back a little bit of history about females. We don't get our sleep because we have all these things that are going on and not starting in high school with our periods and, and all those kinds of things. And then our hormones change as we get older, we go through pregnancy and then we go through menopause. Um, some women experience cramps and headaches and all those kinds of things during their menstrual cycle. Um, and then we're, so we're not really staying asleep like we should. So we go through all those kinds of uh, things. So, um, we also, during those times, we can have very disturbing dreams, sleeplessness, fatigue, trouble concentrating, all those kinds of things. Um, and then we talk about pregnancy. You guys all, you know, if you've been through that, you know what that's like. And then you're, you're getting up, you're raising kids. You're usually the ones getting out of bed. It's usually not the husband or the significant other. Sometimes, um, sometimes they, they do help us, but mainly we feel that responsibility and, and that just leads to that sleeplessness and daytime fatigue. And we also report our sleep problems a little bit different, um, which is interesting. A lot of our, you know, when I, when I read a little bit deeper, and just from my experience, when I'm anxious or stressed, I know I don't sleep. I'm very, very restless. This happened to me last night. I just was thinking about way, 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 way too many things. Um, and we'll talk about what do you do when that happens to you? you and um, the other thing is with our incidences of obesity um, in this nation, um, sleep apnea is getting to be um, very, very common, not only in, in men, but in women. Um, so that, that's a, that's a big deal too. The other thing is, um, we focus more on fatigue and depression, whereas men wake up, you know, snoring and gasping. And sometimes I think that with the sleep apnea, we're not as diagnosed as often with the sleep apnea. I mean, it doesn't mean that you have to be overweight to have it, but, um, it's, we just experience our symptoms um, come out a little bit different than a man's do. So if you are starting to snore and you're more restless, that could be a problem, even though um, you may or may not have weight problems. So it's just a very interesting how the differences between men and women are. Uh, so 
Let's talk a little bit about sleep hygiene and, and some of these things you, you guys may know and you already are incorporating, but some of them may not be. So one thing is avoid naps during the day, limit your caffeine, alcohol, and nicotine intake. Now, sometimes if you're sick and let's say you are up all night, I wouldn't say just don't, don't nap. Sometimes you need that just to get through the day. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying like a two hour nap, but maybe it's a 20 minute nap or something like that, just to give you a little bit more energy. Um, and then like related to caffeine, uh, recommended is don't have caffeine after one o'clock in the afternoon. Um, alcohol, limit it at, in the evening. Uh, I'm not saying become a daytime drinker, although there are days I feel like yeah. I should. <laughs> Why not? But, um, limit, limit to one glass or two glasses or something of, of alcohol. And then sleeping, of course, or uh, sorry, smoking um, is not good for us either. Uh, but of course, engaging in regular exercise and following a consistent sleep schedule. And so that's where it, that's where I think the focus should be is that consistent sleep schedule and how you, how your bedtime routine is. And so make your bedroom as cool, dark, and quiet as possible, removing clutter and electronics. Like there are a lot of us that have a TV on and we fall asleep to the TV or we're in scrolling on our phone oh, and um, that is not recommended. So a cool place, my bedroom's always cold and it's always really dark and I don't have a TV, used to uh, have a TV, but um, for the last couple of years, I have had, have had not because I'll fall asleep with it. Then I'm waking up and it's just a very restless sleep. And we can talk about what you guys do too. So set your sleep schedule. So this is just really. Hello. Lost you. We lost you. Hello. Uh, I'm here, Pat. We can't hear you. you. Can't hear me. Well, ladies, what do you do when you need to fall asleep? <laughs> well, I'm falling asleep right now because I was up all night. Uh oh. Uh oh. Are you guys not? We can't hear you, Diana. <laughs> all right. Well, that is we. There you go. Can you hear me now? Now we can hear you. Yeah. That's weird. All I did was shut off my mute and turn it back on. Maybe I should do that with my video. There you go. That still doesn't want to come on. And my camera's on. That's really weird. Anyway, I'm glad you can hear me. Yeah. I don't know. This electronics. I have really good reception here, too. So um, so let's talk about your sleep schedule, right? Did you know that women over 50 need not seven to nine hours of sleep per night? Isn't that crazy? Good luck. Yeah, right. So... This is recommended. Have a fixed wake up time, regardless whether it's a weekday or weekend. If you try, if you wake up at the same time, you will get into that schedule of consistent sleep. So if you get up at six on Monday through Friday, you should be getting up at six on Saturday and Sunday. It really does work. I've done this before. I do go in my periods where I don't, and I end up sleeping a little bit later, but it really does help a lot. <sighs> The other thing is calculate a target bedtime based on your fixed wake up time and do your best to be ready for bed around that same time each night. So for me, I try to get to bed between 10 and 1030 um, and then up between six and 630. Sometimes I'm up earlier depending on what's going on during my day, but then I try and go to bed a little bit earlier. And that's hard for me. I'll really be honest with you because I'm more of a night owl. Um, I like the mornings, but I like to be up at night too. So um, it kind of varies between 10 and 11 typically. Um, and then I'm up usually by six, um, sometimes a little bit earlier. And I try and shoot for seven hours. If I get eight, it's great. But seven hours is my target time. And so the best thing too to, to try and shift those sleep times is make gradual adjustments. If you do it all at once, sometimes it's too much. So that's just like when you're drinking your water and getting your ounces and you gradually add an ounce or two each time just to, to, to increase those ounces of water every day. It's a lot like that when you're trying to figure out a sleep schedule too. 
So like here, make small step-by-step adjustments of up to an hour or two so you can get adjusted and settle into a new schedule. Um, don't overdo it with naps. I mean, it can be a handy way to regain energy, but it can throw your sleep off at night. So um, keep those naps relatively short and limited to early afternoon. I remember when I was working PM shift as a nurse, I would try and, because I would I wouldn't get home a lot until kind of to like one in the morning, get up with the kids and get them to school. I would try and nap around one o'clock and sleep from one to three. So that when I went to work at three o'clock, then I would, I could make it through my night. So you can kind of treat it as that way too. So following a nighttime routine. So again, keep your routines consistent, follow the same steps each night, like putting pajamas on, brushing your teeth, all of that. It's like it's like when you were getting your kids ready for bed and you had to get them a routine so they could fall asleep and that, you know, stay up and drive you crazy. You need to do that with yourself too. So uh, 30 minutes before winding down, take advantage of whatever calms you down. It might be music, stretching, reading, relaxation, exercising, meditation, I journal, I journal and I like to read. That really helps me wind down. I do brush my teeth. I wash my face. You know, it's the same, 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 same routine. Um, and then, of course, as it gets darker, you want to, you know, make sure it's a little darker in your house, right, which will help produce that melatonin. And um, that helps um, us fall asleep. The difference with this is when when it gets to be winter and it's dark at 4 30 in the afternoon i think that's the most difficult time for us because i'm ready to go to sleep by five at night because it's dark out and so how do you stay moving and stuff when it gets to be dark out like like that and a lot of times it's you know lights on in the house just staying active i'm still still preparing for bed the normal ways you might find yourself going to sleep maybe a little bit sooner um, and so those are those times where you have to kind of adjust yourself. Um, let's see, Apl unplug from electronics, cell phones, tablets, laptops. It's that um, the blue light that decreased melatonin production. So if you're one of those that people that scroll before you go to bed, it's going to take you another hour to go to sleep once you put that phone down. And I know you guys probably know that. So that is such... You know, you think about our kids too. They're on their phones and all that. If and and they all suffer from going to bed at a decent time and going to sleep. So you need to be device free, and it's it's very very true. It does help a lot. So um, you can test what works for you. You know, meditation, mindfulness, breathing, all that kind of stuff. I know people who go out for a walk at night too, and, and it helps them relax. That's just their routine. So um, just kind of keep those things in mind. So another thing, and this is hard for me to understand because don't toss and turn, right? Because it, it's supposed to mentally help you connect between being in bed and actually being asleep. So if, after 20 minutes, you haven't gotten to sleep, get up, stretch, read, or do something else calming in low light before trying to fall asleep again. I struggle with this because once I'm in bed, I don't want to get up. But again, my biggest thing for me that works is I get up and I read. And it's just a little low light. It's not a blue light because it's a book. It's not on my tablet. It's a regular book that I read. Uh, and that that does help a lot. So, so the other thing is, you know, it's not only just stuff that you do at night, but what do you do during the day, which will help play a part in getting that good sleep. So it's those positive routines right it's that circadian rhythm which will help limit those sleep disruptions but getting daylight exposure and again when it gets to be dark and wintry in our areas that is the most difficult piece and so we talk about the light lamps and and all of those kinds of things and getting that sun exposure that's the most difficult part i think about living in in, in these in the cold climates anyway be physically active regular exercise and of course, you guys all know this, and it has a like a host of other health benefits. Don't smoke because nicotine will stimulate and disrupt that sleep. Reduce alcohol consumption. It make it might make it easier to fall asleep, like passing out. But what happens is it disrupts the sleep later in the night, which is not good. 
So keep it best to moderate and, and avoid it later in the evening. Cutting down on caffeine, I really talked about this. It'll keep you wired even when you want to rest. So just, tr and, and the recommendation is after one o'clock. Um, some people are a little bit different. I, my dad is crazy. He drinks coffee and he can have coffee at nine o'clock at night and go to bed and be fine. But a lot of people can't do that. This one is one that really bothers me if I eat out late, if I go out to eat and it's, you know, it might not even be a big, big meal, but it's still eating before you go to bed and you're still digesting. And what happens is, and we all know food gives us energy and wants us to, you know, that helps us get on through our day and, and things. And if we're digesting at night, it's going to be restless and it's just going to add to add to that weight. And so if you're going to have some snacks, just make sure they're on the lighter side, veggies, you know, cucumbers, whatever, those kinds of things before going to bed. Also restrict in bed activity. Um, it's best to only use bed for sleep with sex being the one exception. Sex makes you sleepier. So there you go, ladies. <laughs> what other activity would you be doing? <laughs> I, know, I know. Watching TV. What? <laughs> Exercising. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, the, yeah, texting. Yeah. Texting. Oh, oh yeah. more. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there are, there are people who go to bed with their laptops and they work at night in bed. You know, I could not do that. I would, that would be just really disruptive. Plus I couldn't concentrate, but, and then you talked a little bit about this, but optimizing your bedroom, um, make sure it's like a tranquil, calm place, right? Um, comfortable mattress and pillow, all that kind of stuff. Um, your bedding and things should be really, you know, I, honestly what you like and, and matches your needs and preferences. I like a cool bed or bedroom, like 65 degrees is is what the literature says. I think whatever you feel comfortable at. I'm usually around 68. 65 is a little chilly. Um, <laughs> it has bad. It's like, I don't sleep with many covers on. I'm warm at night, so I like it cold. <laughs> I'm freezing. I'm shiver. <laughs> yeah, right, right. You can, you can burn more calories that way. <laughs> Blocking out light, um, eye masks or heavy curtains, things like that. Drown out noise. I'm one of those people, I use a fan at night. It's not necessarily for the airflow, it's for the noise. It just it just takes all the, everything else out of, out of, and I can just listen to the fan. You can you get those, I have an app on my phone that's, it's called the fan app. So if I'm traveling, I have this app on my phone. I know it works though. Anything to help <laughs> sleep. It's perfect. It's, and you can get other other noises too. <laughs> like I don't so like early. the birds. I don't like birds or waterfalls. <laughs> but I like fan. I know it's crazy. Sometimes calming scents like lavender. So um, there is oh, the essential oils that you can get and diffuse. Lavender is a nice one to, to help with, with sleep and stuff. So um really honestly you don't have to change things all at once just try uh, one thing here one thing there make small steps and it, you know honestly what what works for you may not work for somebody else but it's just some ideas uh it tends to um um you know whatever works for you guys and so try some of these things honestly um, I've tried a few of them. Some, some, most of them work. Some really don't, you know, and it just is totally up to you. Um, like I put my cell phone down and everything by eight 30 at night. So I think oh. that helps a lot. Um, all right. Like I just so weird that my video is not coming up. I'm trying to make it start anyway. So tell me, what do you guys, I'll start from who I have on the screen. What do you guys do to help you get to sleep? Jody? I know you've been struggling a little bit with, with the sleep and stuff. What kinds of things have you been, been helpful for you? That's actually gotten a little bit better recently. Okay, good. Um, I started taking, well, I think I told you that I take the magnesium. Magnesium, yeah. 
and I put that in my last bottle of water because I do liquid. So yeah. I put that in my last bottle of water of the evening, and um, I did get some melatonin as well. Okay. Good. So I'm taking those two, and I it's usually about ten o'clock at night is about when I go to bed because that's about when my daughter leaves for work. So. I go up to bed at that point and my alarm uh, goes off at 5.15 in the morning. <laughs> um, if I have trouble getting to sleep, I mean, I might watch TV for a little bit, but I set the sleep timer so that it shuts off, but uh -huh. I still have trouble getting to sleep. I have some breathing exercises that I do that it's almost like the, the cool down from yoga. Oh, it's right. Session, you know, just getting the, the air literally in the back of your throat and you can hear it when you know you can hear it and usually within a couple minutes i'm asleep oh nice so just deep slow in through the nose out through the mouth you know to a count of you know eight to ten it helps yeah anything you can do to relax and i usually do that too uh, and I start from my head and I relax my head and then I relax my jaw and my neck. And a lot of times before I even get down to my feet, I can roll over and go to sleep. Yep. That's something that's really helpful too. Um, yeah, that's great. That's great. Good. Good. So Marie, what about you? I don't have any problem going to sleep. I, I have hot flashes all night long and uh -huh. I've tried different things and I, I'm not able to take, um, any hormone treatment okay. mm -hmm. um, because of the cancer on my mother's side. Right. So I, I wake up a lot, but I go right back to sleep, but I have broken sleep all night long. Okay. I haven't slept. I haven't slept more than three or four hours at a stretch in probably three years. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. It's, and I mean, I go to bed every night at nine. We get up at four forty here. In the oh, morning, sure. So, um, yeah, I have no problem going to sleep. It's just staying asleep is right. the tough part. Yeah. Have you tried any um, uh, like natural supplements at all? Yeah, I did the uh, Remy Femin. Okay. And that works for about a month and then it just stops working. And then ah. I have to wait a couple months and try starting it over again. But it makes me have really weird dreams weird right dreams. yeah that's what yeah. i heard happens i've not tried that one yeah it's really weird <laughs> mm. but yeah huh there's another one that i'll um can't think of the name of it offhand i have it in a list i'll send you a, a different one that you could try mm -hmm. um to see if that helps there's also some you know staying away from spicy foods at night of course and things like that but there are some foods too that may help with the hot flashes. So I actually developed a list. I can send that out to everyone if you want. Um, well, that'd be great. Yeah. yeah you, there's no reason, you know, try some of those kinds of things. It's obviously all the healthier foods, but sometimes you just have to mm -hmm. eat a little bit more of them too. Um, but you know, and then you guys all know, you know, staying away from processed foods and high sugar and all that, that can really wreak havoc on your sleep too. Um, but I just put that together for somebody else. And then list of this, I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head, but you can try that too. Um, yeah. The, uh, the one thing that does um, uh, help me too. And like Jody, I've been taking the magnesium. I've been taking it in powder form. It has like, um, there's a little flavor to it. So it actually flavors the water and magnesium okay. is a, is a smooth muscle relaxant and we make a magnesium of our own. Um, it's a good electrolyte to have, and it's good for our, our hearts as well. So um, that's something that you guys could try too, or Marie, you could try is some magnesium. Um, you could take it in liquid or or powder, and there's capsules too. I have um, one that was recommended to me that I really, really like. So you know, like you know, you try those things and you see if they work mm -hmm. for you. Um, the melatonin is another one. Um, yeah, I, I I've tried that, and it actually agitated me <laughs> did it do you remember how yeah. much the dose do you remember how much it was i like, i don't remember okay. i have a really tough time with any kind of medication okay. sure. or it, my body does not accept that stuff well and i okay yeah. yeah yeah so yeah it makes sense so you may melatonin sometimes um my mom only takes one milligram and that's enough for her um some of the 
the uh, capsules and stuff, I mean, you can get really high doses and then you're not going to have, it's too much then, you know? Yeah. So, but yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, I had the, the hot flashes and my mother, my mother just stopped having hers and she's 83. <laughs> she had them until uh, this past winter, she said. Mm. So mm. I'm doomed. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you know, when you said about hormone replacement due to cancer, um, like progesterone is something you can take at night before you go to bed. You have to have a prescription for it. You don't need, it's not a high dose, mm -hmm. but I, I think you're probably thinking more of estrogen, um, more than progesterone, but that's something yeah. to think about too. That's really helped me a lot. Okay. Um, so I do magnesium and progesterone at night and that's mm -hmm. really, that's, and you don't need to take a lot, but. Um, that's, that's one that's really helped me with my hot flashes at night. So, um, yeah. All right, Pat, what about you? What helps you sleep? Uh, well, I, I really, the magnesium and the, um, uh, melatonin together were helping me, but I can't take them right now. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, what? I do know that I have a big problem with the phone. I sit and watch television and I'm on the phone mm -hmm. at the same time playing games. Right. And I don't stop that timely, but I did start uh, doing my teeth and washing my face and all that at early, like nine o'clock. Cause I don't go to bed till 11, 12 o'clock at night anyway. Uh -huh. So, I find that if I do that just before I'm going to bed, it wakes me up. Uh huh. Okay. So I don't, I, I try not to do that anymore. And when I wake, like last night, I had four hours sleep. I think I went to bed at three 30. I just oh. knew that I wasn't going to sleep because the night before I got eight and a half hours sleep the first time. in I don't know how long that I've slept like that. And I, I guess that's too much for me because I was hmm. wide awake. So what do I do? I'm on that stupid phone scrolling and mm -hmm. watching videos and all kinds of stuff for hours, hours. Yeah. Huh. Right now, I can't seem to have the um, attention span to read a book. Mm. My mind wanders, and that's what gets me into trouble. My mind starts to mm -hmm. wander about a lot of different things that have happened. So I don't have any good suggestions other than the melatonin and the magnesium together and um, maybe getting ready beforehand. Sometimes I will go in the hot tub um, and that will relax me some, you know, before I go to bed. Mm -hmm. But I, I know that I have to make some changes because this phone business is ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah, it does. It's it's when crazy. It, every yeah. week I get a report on my screen time and I'm in shock. <laughs> it's a mind it's it's a mindless way for me to right. do something. I must have about eight games on that phone. Right. And yeah. I just go from one to the other. I lose my lives, I go to the next game. I lose my lives, I go to the next <laughs> game. And then by the time I get through all my games, I get back to the first game, I have all my lives back. <laughs> so, pretty stupid. But, oh, you know, that's yeah. what I have to do to cope right now. So, um, right, right. Uh, once I can really get a book that holds my attention, mm -hmm. um, I was thinking mm -hmm. of going to the library and, and looking around because I like to go to the library. I used to anyway, and see if that'll help me and, and make that routine yeah. that I used to have where I go into the bedroom and I read a right. little and then I go to sleep. Right. So. Like, I don't read a ton, I'll read like two pages. You know, sometimes more, sometimes yeah, and, less. And then I have to get up and put the eye medicine in before I go to bed. So it's oh. like I'm, I'm oh. falling asleep and then I got to put the eye medicine. Oh, sure, sure. I'm laughing at you with the fan because <laughs> as somebody with dry eyes, that would be the end of me to have a fan in the bedroom. <laughs> right. So I listen to the babbling brook. Oh, you do? See, you listen to Not something. my choice. My husband's choice. I prefer... Oh total quiet, but he likes the babbling brook. Aww. So some nights I have to get up out of the room and just go to a different room and sure. I go to sleep on the couch. Right. Make me right. 
Makes you want to pee. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Makes you want to pee. Listen to the water. <laughs> I hear there is there's an app. I heard. I think you even mentioned it once, Diana. It's called Calm. Calm. Yes, it's excellent. That has some really good things on there for sleep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, that's another thing, Marie, too. The Calm app. Yeah, yeah that might help, too. And, and um, yeah, like getting to sleep. But if you can maybe, you know, yeah, the staying asleep, especially with the, with the night sweats. Um, but I'll send you that, that one. Um, and I don't know about you, but I get up at least three times a night to go to the bathroom. Mm. Same here. From, yeah, from the, <laughs> all the water. But but yeah. I can go right back to sleep. If I've been asleep, I go right back to sleep. Right. So that right. doesn't bother me. Yeah, yeah. Getting up and once yeah. at night. Yeah. It's pretty so normal. So my husband and I just had a discussion that I'm. I told him two things were changing. I'm tired of it. No more ice cream because he's, he's just awful with the ice cream. And no more going to bed at midnight. It's not, I'm mm. not doing it anymore. Because he doesn't sleep at all. He ha he's oh. the worst sleeper you've ever. I mean, he gets five hours a night, six tops. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, no, and, and he's been like that for years. Right. Huh. Yeah, and you know, there. my dad did that. My dad would only sleep four hours and... He sleeps more now. He, obviously, he's older, but he could he could thrive on four hours of sleep. I honestly don't know how he did it, but um, yeah, it's crazy. I think men are a little bit different too in that regard. We do need more sleep, women, for sure. It makes us well, less crabby because they snore. He gets cramps. He gets cramps. <laughs> oh, he gets cramps in his feet, cramps in his legs, cramps in his hands. Oh, too much uh, golf. Yeah, he's too much sun in the golf, but he just started taking some special electrolytes and um oh. i think they'll help him yeah 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 probably some potassium that'll yeah. help with that yeah bananas green leafy vegetables he does he, he does all of that but Good. uh and drinks a lot of water but these electrolytes were recommended from a nurse when my son was working for ups and he got into a um from the heat, you know, they're not air conditioned. He went into a literal spasm when he was delivering a package. Oh, I believe it. Ugh. And they had to call the ambulance because he just was totally bent over in cramps. And she gave him these electrolytes that come in a package. And um, my husband and my son used them for quite a while and they worked and then they stopped using them. So whatever. Uh, have you ever yeah. tried, has he tried uh, the tonic water with quinine in it? Oh, he will not do that. No. No. That works too. No, he <laughs> won't do the mustard thing. He won't do anything anybody says. So <laughs> cramp away. That's right. <laughs> you know, it's so true. <laughs> Could you complain you it, right? Why you can't sleep at night. <laughs> huh? I just read something about that quinine water, though, that it was not be good to, to be taking. So, you know what? He got these electrolytes. Okay, that should help. Works. We'll see this yeah. week. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> Cramp away. Cramp away, Grandpa. Cramp away. <laughs> Cramp away, Gramps. <laughs> oh, yeah. He really. Right, right. Thanks for sharing. That's helpful. What about you, Hillary? What you're? I think you're the, a real good sleeper, though. Uh it's hit and miss. I I Is it? noticed like around the full moon time. <laughs> that, that's where I really don't sleep well, and so I kind of track it on the calendar when oh, the full moon is going to come. Are you a werewolf? No. <laughs> Are you a Wiccan? Wicca? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> I just noticed that I'd get all this. Ah. But anyway, um, bananas are my thing, right? If I, mm -hmm. if I I get up and I'll have a banana and that seems to help. Oh. Counting sheep still works. <laughs> what did you um, say? Counting sheep. Counting sheep? Counting sheep. <laughs> Um, the other thing that I do is um, <laughs> I'll, 
<laughs> YouTube. I'll put YouTube on. And there's some oh. um, Hertz frequencies hmm. that you can you can search for. And there's ones that are sleep ones, oh. and that will go to a black screen. Uh huh. And so I'll try one out until I find one that that is a good frequency. Hmm. Or sometimes I'll also use the um, sleep ones that have the dark screen that have like a thunderstorm, thunder and lightning storm, or like. Oh, that's that calm, calm app on the calm app. Right. Mm -hmm. So there is one too that has like you're at the beach and it oh. has like darkness and you can see the waves glistening and the moon. Sometimes you can see the moon coming down. It just depends which one you pick. Right. But that's kind of cool too in so, the dark to see the to hear the waves and oh wow. So let me ask you this. If you put that on, like I was thinking with this calm app, it's on your phone, right? And you put that on and then you fall asleep, your phone is on all night. I don't I don't use my phone. I use the um on on my TV I have YouTube. Oh. So yeah, because I try okay. to keep my phone out of my room. At yeah, night. I don't have a TV in my room. Yeah. The Calm no app, if you have it on your phone, I know for some of the settings, it only lasts for so many minutes and then it stops. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I just keep my phone plugged in, you know, but yeah, it only, there's only, there's, there's apps that you can plug or that you can click on and then it will, um, or areas in Calm app and then it only plays for so long. So it doesn't just keep going and going. But it's a real good one. But yeah, YouTube would be, you can get a YouTube app on your phone too and probably do the same thing. Um, you know, I have it on my phone. Yeah, yeah I have it I'm on just, my TV, but it's not in my room, but that's right. okay. Yeah, and listening, that's a great idea. I never thought about that, going to YouTube to do that. There's a lot of things out there about sleep because that's a huge problem mm -hmm. um, with people. And I, a lot of it, I, I think it just stems from social media and then anxiety and stress and everything that's going on in the world and people are watching the news and they watch the news before they go to bed. Well, that's like the worst thing you can do. But like, I don't know about your parents, but that's what my parents would do. That's what they do. First thing in the morning, they put the news on. First thing they go do before they go to bed, they put the news on, you know, that's how they do. You raised. know, the first thing I do in the morning, every single morning is all your fault, Diana. <laughs> I hope it's good. I go, I, I go to Fitbit and I look to see how many hours I slept. And I'm always short, 10 minutes, 6.50, 6.45, 6.50. And I go, damn it. And I lay down and try to sleep for 10 more minutes. And it never <laughs> every day, every day. Every I day. Yeah. I go to my Fitbit too. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I never, I look at my log. I rarely make the seven hours. Yeah. But you're, you know what? It's not like you're not trying. So, and you've had a lot of things. <laughs> no, no, and you've had a lot of things happen in your life here recently. So you're doing very, very, very well with that. Um, and you guys are all, you know, nobody's perfect, right? And we're trying to learn what can we do to better ourselves and help ourselves. And then, and then tap into each other, finding out what each one of you is doing to help you you know, with what you are doing to get some more sleep. So it's a trial and error and finding what works for you. And um, that's what's really good about, about having you guys in the community too, because, you know, I certainly don't know everything and I learn from you guys and um, I never, um, bananas help you sleep. I would have never thought, I wonder what it is about the banana or unless it's, do you just do that full moon? <laughs> no but like the other thing too is is uh bananas and warm milk oh but I, I don't drink milk so i've done like um warm almond milk or almond oh milk. sure but yeah those the combination of that helps too oh, i just i just googled it and because melatonin oh. would make my heart race and sure. so i didn't really yeah, so I don't like taking it. Right. Wow. Um, and then I would I would wake up with all the hot, hot hotness too. 
I that still happens to me if I have too much clothing on. So okay. I just go down. I like pretty much front down to bare, um, like a tank top and right landies right. and just. Uh, I have a spray water bottle. If I get really hot, I spray it all over me. I'll do that, you know, maybe oh, a boy. few times a night if if the heat shows up. But if my room is really cool, I seem to be, and I have the fan on, I seem to keep sleeping. So yeah, I like my fan and, and way better, way better. Never thought about the spray bottle. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Well, if you ever develop dry eyes, you got to get rid of the fan. That's the first thing they tell you to go. That's right. My poor husband, he loves the fan. I cannot have it on. Mm. Have you guys ever tried the the neck wrap? You can. Mm. There's like a huh. maybe outside. You can actually soak it in water, but obviously you don't want to do that if you're laying in bed. But there's the there's like the cooling the packs or whatever the cooling packs you can either oh sure i have a towel like that too yeah put it on the back of your neck what, like yeah it. that's interesting when my when i was having them really really bad i i would get that soaking wet and i would like put it around me yeah well and it <laughs> does help take the hotness away yeah, all this you know, oh. your bed then just put it lay it down and put it on the bed yeah on it yeah, that's interesting all these have... all these things we do yep i tried the cooling pillow it just didn't no. work hmm. no. hmm. interesting yeah try the spritz bottle marie that's what i want to see you spritzing yourself at night i don't think my dogs <laughs> would be too happy if i started spraying them yeah <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> oh, might cool them down too, right? <laughs> yeah. Did anybody ever try? Um, I, I don't have hot flashes anymore. I haven't in a long time. Once in a blue moon, I'll get them. But I think I used to do uh, some natural stuff with saw palmetto or something. Yeah, that's one of them. Yeah. And I know that helped me but way back when. Uh-huh. There's black coal. Ago. Yeah, and it's still out there. But um, black cohosh is another one. Yeah, my sister did that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, um, those are two. Um, natural, you can get those anywhere, really. You want to get a, a decent supplement company, too. But um, yeah, those are all really good ideas. So when I post this video, I'll put, I wrote some of these things down. I'll put that in the comment section for everybody. Um, and I'll put that those um, other ideas for the natural supplements too for you guys too, and I'll just put in what everybody else said, and then we'll have everything together. So is this helpful? Yes. I know you can't see me. I really don't know why that is. That is so bizarre. And I'll just chuck it up to technology. So I She's was just sitting there in her bra and underwear. She you bet that. I am. Yep. <laughs> Drinking some wine. <laughs> no, yeah, you <laughs> <laughs> Too much information, Jody. <laughs> yeah, TMI. <laughs> Chalk it up to technology. One thing too, I'm gonna tell you guys, I was gonna send out a, a message too, but my Trimax WellFit email, the email that I use for everything has been down because um, my um we took down a website and one of the websites was the domain for my email. So I lost my email. So hopefully within 24 hours. So by tomorrow morning, I should have my email back up. So instead of emailing me, which I don't think any of you really do just keep messaging me and trainer eyes or send a yeah. text. Yeah. So um, it's just another one of those things that um, I have to wait to have done. But um, so anyway, um, anything else you guys, Nope. I got to go right. eat now. I'm hungry. All right. Cool. Well, I, thanks for sharing. Yeah, go ahead. I am dealing with God awful bloat I since don't. I started taking this stupid medication for my thyroid. Really? Um, yep. Is that yep. a side effect? Is that a side effect of it? 
it, initially it said it can cause weight gain, but normal, but that's because it's supposed to increase your metabolism and causes you to be hungry. But I'm not finding that I'm any more hungry. Okay. I mean, I'm fine as far as that goes. To be honest, I could eat less. Okay. Huh. So is the bloat like gastric bloat it's or is it? Belly. But yeah, I mean, I don't have gas. I'm not uncomfortable. It just, I look in the mirror and I'm like, what the huh. hell is huh. that? Wow. What's the thyroid medicine that you're on? Is it uh, the level, level thyroxine? Okay. 25 milligrams. And of course, I have to go get blood work done because she wants, might want to right. it. Oh, yeah. First, when are you getting your blood work done? Tomorrow morning. Yeah, I would, um, you'll get those results back probably by the evening of that of tomorrow or the next day. But it'll be interesting to see what your results are. But um, let me ask, I have a person that I go to to ask them questions about some of this stuff. Let me ask him um, if that is something that, causes that and if there's anything we can do for that you're drinking enough water right you drink I'm still a lot at, yeah. i try to shoot for 120 but I, yeah, it's yeah. probably 100 yeah that's fine that's still enough many plenty plenty so um interesting These medicines are awful aren't they I still oh. i even with the half dose now uh, mm. i was so excited i got my heart rate up to 90 today we'll be oh. That's better than you seventy. Know, I can't. I'm not going to lose any weight with with this. It's yeah. going to be a terror. Yeah. Ugh. Put on twenty it's pounds since Christmas. What? Yeah. I've put on twenty pounds since Christmas because mm -hmm. of my thyroid. It took them forever. Oh, to I didn't. Them. Oh gosh. Yeah, I yeah. put on yeah. seven, seven, and then uh, almost eight now, and it's so. It's first. Well, I know why I did that, but it's been a month that I've been really eating properly except for the ice cream last night <laughs> and i can't get my heart rate up above 90 at all oh, yeah i mean it's still in the 40s most of the day so you know that's crazy it's just uh, is there any other medication they could try uh not for tachycardia yeah uh, it's funny i had tachycardia now i have bradycardia so yeah. stupid yeah it is frustrating. But anyway, I am, now I see what you mean. I didn't know you had gained weight, Jody. That sucks. I know. I feel like crap because of it. But Same. my pants were so tight the other day, I was getting worried. Oh, yeah. Because I can't yeah. start that where I'm going to have, you know, after all this. Yeah, right. all my clothes. Yeah, yeah, I know. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad your heart rate's higher than 70, though. Yeah, when you same. can get it no up, so it that's is. at the gym right that's what i mean yeah, yeah that's good so i'm that's sitting good. here talking to you and it's at 44 oh yeah Ooh. it's ridiculous but you know what yes. we just have to stick it out until we figure out what's what that's all right, right jody and you so, yeah yeah well, and the thyroid it. stuff the thyroid stuff we'll just have to yeah. gotta really work on we'll, that we'll get so. it straight i'm gonna ask some questions though about that i'll find out some more see what i can do at least I had a good weekend. I hit all three, closed all three of my rings two days in a row. And I had good. A and I didn't tank. I actually got up, went to work and felt pretty good today. So I'm good. happy. With that. It's good. been a while. Good. What's on your lap there, Marie? Who is that? Oh, <laughs> so cute. Oh my goodness. Look at him. What is that? This is Bella. Bella. My daughter oh. calls her Lucifer. <laughs> <laughs> She doesn't She's look like adorable. a Lucifer. She is. Oh, she is. Oh, is she? <laughs> She's she not even like looking anyone. at us. Look at. She's not even looking at us. <laughs> she, is that a Chihuahua? Oh, look yeah. A Chihuahua mix. <laughs> oh yeah, El, El, El Diablo. They call the little Chihuahuas El Diablos. <laughs> She's cute. <laughs> White oh terrors. my! Oh my goodness! She's That's a brat. A <laughs> Yeah, Look at she's got her head down. She feels yeah. bad. <laughs> All right, I'm signing off. Bye. All right, guys. Thank Maybe you for sharing. Week. All right, I'll be in touch. Bye. Thank Bye. You. Good night, everybody. Bye. Bye.